Welcome into the BBOC tailgate presented by BetMGM. Calabrese and I, we bet player props. And we're 15 and four on the year, four and one last week. Um, I guess I'm not totally doing my part as well as you are, but you know, that's why you give more picks than I do. So Calabrese, start us off. Let's get right into it. No one cares about anything other than winners. All right, the hottest game of Saturday, quite literally, it's going to be 96 degrees to kick off down 40 acres in Austin, Texas. I'm going to go over on the KU quarterback, Jalen Daniels, 208 and a half passing yards. I'd play this up to 219 and a half. And the reasons are simple. Four of his last six starts, he's cruised past this number. And last year when he played Texas, a game that was dominated by the Longhorns, he threw for 230 yards up against a Longhorn defense this year. They're just not going to run against them. So just throw that out that UT is 11th in defensive success rate against the run. But when it comes to passing explosives, Texas is 105th in the nation. And the Jayhawks have hit at least one 40 plus yard pass in every game this season. And then, as I mentioned, Jalen Daniels has had success in his last six starts. He has been on fire this year. He's connecting on just about three quarters of his passes. That's eighth nationally in completion percentage. And then he ranks 19th nationally in QBR. So I'm going to play this guy, as I said, all the way up to 219 and a half. I think that they're going to be playing from behind in terms of game script. And the you know implied total here has them scoring you know somewhere in the 20s. I see that for the Jayhawks behind a big game from Daniels. I love I, this is one of my my favorite picks you've given. I, I've been waiting to play Daniels, but uh, this seems like a great great spot. Super excited! They're going to just throw the rock a million times. So, and speaking of a game that we expect a lot of rock throwing and a lot of points, I kind of reverse engineered this one. Jordan Watkins over fifty seven and a half receiving yards. The old Miss wide receiver. The total for this game, Calabrese, is sixty seven and a half. So I'm like, okay, well, we're expected to get a lot of points in that game. How are these points going to come by? Um, well, not really afraid of LSU's pass defense. So let's go to the leader in targets per game for the Ole Miss offense. And that's Jordan Watkins. A lot of points, a lot of throwing. I say over 67 and a half yards. Can I get your blessing? Absolutely. Well, one of the biggest surprises of the year coming in, we figured that LSU's defense was going to take a step forward, a team that was playing pretty well at the end of last year, and they just haven't been able to get it together. They're trying to you know, move some pieces around Harold per Perkins Jr. is not, you know, playing in the traditional role that they had in mind for him at middle linebacker, they're moving him back to the edge. They just haven't been able to generate the kind of pressure to, you know, create the defensive havoc they need to slow down teams. So I like this play a lot. All right. I am actually down here in Auburn, Alabama for the CBS 330 game against the Georgia Bulldogs. This one is pretty simple for me. If you look at Kirby Smart since he's taken over in 2016 with UGA, he, this would be a, a shocking stat for a lot of people to learn. He's the second worst home favorite in the conference. Only Vandy has covered fewer games than Kirby Smart. And basically, it's a rat poison situation. They're always big favorites. They're getting pats on the back. They feel good. They always take their foot off the accelerator at home. When they're a road favorite... It's absolutely the opposite direction. He goes full John Hamm from the town where the not effing around crew, 25 and two straight up as a road favorite, 19 and eight against the spread. What that says to me is they're always exceeding their expectations. So how can we get a player prop out of this? Brock Bowers touchdown. I play this all the way up to negative 300. I, anytime touchdown score in this one, I see him getting into the end zone because he does a bunch of incredible things in, in this offense. And in the last six quarters, they get to halftime against South Carolina. Kirby loses his mind. They unleash, you know, the dogs of war on the Gamecocks. They crush him in the second half. The last six quarters for Bowers, 15 receptions, 167 yards, two touchdowns. The offense is going to run through him here. And what's interesting about him is that he also has five career rushing touchdowns. So this isn't a traditional tight end play where you need a red zone touchdown. Also, a crazy stat about Brock Bowers, in his career, he has 10 touchdown receptions of over 20 yards. So he can score from far away. He can score up close. He can run the ball. Anytime touchdown, Brock Bowers played up to minus 300. I'm hoping when it pops in the market, we get it you know, closer to minus 200. Love that. Love that. Love that. Because I'm also on, on Georgia big here. I, I laid 14, like 14 and a half as well. I think you have 14 and a half because I think Georgia, like you said, just does the thing where they go, give me an excuse. Just give me an excuse to remind you that we're Georgia and this Auburn team. They've been really pesky. Hugh Freeze has done a, a pretty good job. But again, Georgia's like, give me an excuse. So I pitch to you. I'm also liking Brock Bowers over 59 and a half receiving yards. 
Because I just, again, I just think the Auburn defense is getting a little too much credit here. And I get to an elite team and an elite pass catcher at a number that I think is kind of, you know, again, giving a little too much credit to the Auburn defense. So tell me, Bowers, tell me my head's in the right place. Oh, absolutely. And Mike Bobo knows for this offense to be elite, to be national title caliber, once again, the offense has to run through Bowers. He is their best option because he's a yard after reception savant. Like you saw him just throwing people around like they were children defending him in that UAB game last week. I, I don't know if he's going to be able to pull off those same moves against Auburn, a defense that is you know exceeding expectations early on. But I see him getting at least six or seven targets in this game. And he's somebody who can hit you know, 40, 50 yard reception right off the pop. So I, I like that a lot. I'm going to go with Riley Leonard playing Duke. Maybe the biggest game in Duke history, game day, all the pomp and circumstance. When I saw this number hit the market, I was shocked to see it below 200. 199 and a half for his passing prop. I'm going to go over here. If you remove it, his game against Lafayette earlier in the year where he started 12 for 12, they were both racing the Leopards out of the Patriot League. They pull him. Let's put that game aside. In his last seven games, he's gone over in five on this number, getting to at least 200 passing yards. And Duke this year has an incredible offensive line. They're second in havoc allowed. What that basically means is people are not getting to Leonard. So he's got time to operate. He has lots of veteran wide receivers and tight ends and running backs. These guys know how to get open for him. And when I look at the Notre Dame defense, the, the closest comp is Brennan Armstrong. He threw for 260 yards against the Fighting Irish. I understand game script wise, they were behind. You know, he got some garbage yardage in there. But I, I see this as a Riley Leonard overplay. It's probably my favorite of the entire week. And then when you go back in the game film last week, Kyle McCord, who essentially didn't have Marvin Harrison for the entire second half, he threw for 240. I understand that Duke wants to run it a little bit more. Leonard is, you know, a dual threat. If you can find it in the market, I've seen it a few places, 245 and a half for his hybrid number, his passing and rushing. I love that one as well. But we'll go over 199 and a half on passing against the Fighting Irish. Calabrese, in what world is someone penalized for going 12 for 12 to start a ball game? Yeah, it, it, it's it's wild. You know, some people, you know, keep their starters in, pad those stats, get a Heisman resume together. But I think Duke's a live dog here. I think it's going to be a four-quarter battle, and it's the whole offense is obviously running through Leonard. So I'm going to see him having a big game. And I'll throw another prediction in here. He's going to be the Alabama starting quarterback next year. Watch out for the transfer portal. I think the Alabama native is going to save the Alabama offense next season. Oh, boy, Calabrese. I wish we had a number on that, but you'll be down there. In Auburn, it should be a great, great weekend of college football. Let's keep the train rolling. Let's keep the train rolling. That'll do it for us on BBOC Tailgates and my bet MGM. Everybody, good luck for this week five slate. 